Hello and welcome to today's session. Boy, am I excited to get rocking and rolling. Today we're going to be talking about two questions to optimize your sales stack as we talk today about all sorts of different technologies. We want to set it up right and thinking about how do you even think about the right technology. Uh, before we jump in, quick introductions of myself, uh, Gabe Larson. I run what we call our Inside Sales Labs. I'll be offended if you don't grab me on LinkedIn or Twitter. And then I've also got to make a quick plug for our Sales Acceleration Podcast. Um, you know, do if you're thinking about all things Sales Acceleration, check that out. Myself and co-host, Mr. Steve Ayer, twice a week episodes, great guests, great topics, all things marketing, sales, and sales operations. So. With that, let's go ahead and dive in. Um, when, it, when it comes to thinking about the, the state sales stack or an optimized sales stack, I'm not surprised that people get confused. There are so many different technologies, a lot of overlap, a lot of, a lot of different functions, a lot of tools that play in different areas. It just can become very confusing, and one of the questions – that I often get from people is, Gabe, where do I even start? There's just too much going on. How do I navigate through these dirty waters? How do I figure out where to even begin? So there's usually two questions that I like to start with um, before we even get to the technology. And I want to take you a little bit deeper into those today. The first one is, have you mapped your sales process? Um, a lot of people know what this means. Most people haven't done it. And <laughs> I want to talk about that. And then number two, are you buying are you buying platforms or pieces? And want to talk a little bit about the shape of the sales acceleration market and some of the different tech stacks that are available. Get you kind of thinking through some of those concepts. So let's dive into the first one. Um, have you mapped your sales process? Now. This is one of my favorite quotes, uh, says everybody here, I've never mapped out my sales process beginning to end. I've actually mapped out 200 sales processes of different companies, different functional areas. I've visited a lot of companies, and I probably have come across, I don't know, maybe three out of oh, literally hundreds of people who have showed me a detailed process map that highlights strengths and weaknesses. Um, interesting stat here just to kind of back up that a lot of people have not gone this direction. This is a Gardner study. 35% uh, of senior sales executives have instituted a formal enterprise-wide sales process. I even think it's less than that, to be honest. My experience would say that it's more in the 5%, uh, maybe even lower, 3 1%. So it's definitely a problem, and if you're serious about figuring out which technologies you need, you can't just go for the shiny object. You've got to figure out what, where you're deficient, why you're deficient, and then see if you can't get technologies to plug some of those gaps. So when I coach organizations on how to think about it, you'll have to, I'll have to apologize because sometimes I get a little tactical, but... I, I, you got to get this out. You got to get this on paper. And so I typically walk through a six-step process to get a map down, to get it out. And I'll take you through a couple of those steps today. One, understanding the process stages. Those are some of the functional areas in your organization. That's a little more of the high level. Um, next is you want to get into the structure that you actually are going to use to define that process map. Then you get it on paper. You put that current state down. Then you sit down and you review it with strengths and weaknesses, get that future state down with some of the fixes, and then ideally some sort of governance or iterative process so that you can actually get those changes in place. And you can also make sure that you keep a watch on it for decay and de delay over the, the following months or quarters. So let's walk through a couple of these. first one is these concept of process stages. Um, and th this is just a sample company here where you basically look and say, let's start at a high level. Rather than getting into the nitty-gritty, let's just kind of see if we can't generally get the process stages or some of the functional areas in a business. And what you're seeing here is 
yes, okay, we've got a marketing area. Um, they're generally sending leads to a lead development team. That's the blue team there. Um, and that lead development team can then qualify and send leads to a to an inside or an outside team. But those inside and outside business development or sales, they do a lot of their own prospecting. They're using kind of their own lists or third-party lists. And then before a deal can actually close, we have a couple other teams involved. We've got an internal underwrite and we've got a legal team and a customer management team. So if you can get that high level out, that's usually where executives want to start. It's something that they can digest. They don't want to get too into the nitty-gritty. Um, but it's a nice way to just get the high-level 30,000-foot view down on paper. Then you can start to actually dive into the more specific areas of how these different functional areas start to work together. And you'll see how the technology fits into here in a minute. So um, this is just a sample current state. You can see um, one of the things I think people get stuck on a lot is they get stuck on which, which programs to use and which shapes to use. Um, there is actually a formal process mapping language. You know, there's all these different shapes that you can use, but, and, and there's some great tools. So, you know, certainly you can use a Microsoft PowerPoint. You can use uh, some free tools like Lucid Charts. Um, they've got a free version, a paid version. You can do Microsoft Visio. Uh, the, the program doesn't matter as much. And truthfully, the shape shouldn't matter as either. I wouldn't get so caught up in that. I'm a sales guy. You're probably a salesperson. I, I, you know, whatever you can do to get it down on paper, I like to keep it as basic as possible. This is just a sample from one of our clients. You can see they've used some icons. They've used um, a couple different shapes. Some of this is not, uh, this is not the quote-unquote perfect language, but it gets the job done. Now, a couple things that I do like about this is they've thought through and, and put some different notes and put in some numbers. I think it is important not only to walk through the step-by-step, -step, but also see where some of the different metrics are falling on that process map. So once you've got the shapes determined and you've, you've been able to put a step-by-step -step structure of your current state, then you've got to see if you can't sit down and review that current state and come up with a future state and, and notice the simplicity or notice the cut down, um, the simplification from the current to the future. That's what you're trying to do. You're trying to say, how can we take this complicated, unorganized process and, and break it down, get some efficiencies, get some effectiveness in here. Now, you'll notice in here as well, and, and I love this concept of, okay, now that we've reviewed current, we feel like there's some different technologies, and those are the green boxes that we feel like we could actually insert in to a future state to be able to add some of the efficiencies that we're ideally looking for. Now, we've put some names of some of our potential products. You'll see some products of potentially some other vendors. <coughs> Whatever it may be, this is where kind of the rubber meets the road. You're in that place where you say, okay, I now know where I am. I know who I am. Now I'm open and I can actually talk about where some of the different technologies may fit in. And, and this is, I think, kind of the crux of question one. If you can, and this is usually where I start with clients and prospects, if you can show me a, a current state or future state process map and show me the weaknesses that you're trying to overcome using technology, then we can actually have a real conversation. If you just jump to technology and say, hey, I've got to have this because somebody else has it or I've heard about or the demo looks great, um, it's kind of technology overload. I had... Um, I have many times leaders will say, I've just got too many technologies. So see if you can't get that process down, figure out where the weaknesses are, then go ahead and insert the technology. So the takeaway from here is um, do it. Take the challenge, map that sales process beginning to end, and then honestly send it over to me. I'll brainstorm with you anytime you want. We'll go through it and see where some of those weaknesses are and see if we can't find some technology to fill the gaps. So that's question one. Let's, uh, let's go into to question two here. So uh, are you buying platforms or are you buying pieces? Now, we did a sales acceleration study where we looked at the average spend per rep, and it came out to be um, about $2,280 per person. That's including CRM. That's including some of the other operational technologies that you're you're probably using, that's a lot per person per rep. 
Um, so the question, are, are you av- allocating that correctly? How are you allocating that? What are you doing with it? Um, this was an interesting experience that I had a couple months back. So I came across this study. The average rep spends four hours a week updating Salesforce. Um, uh, you know, certainly CRM in general can be a little bit touch and go. can be a little bit, we have to put a lot in to get a lot out. I, I sat down with a sales leader um, on the West Coast, and, and he walked me through this. This is a kind of a quote from him. He said, look, Gabe, you know, the CRM, you know, we wanted it to start working more for us, so we wanted to get some sales acceleration tools. Uh, but he said, I have 17 sales acceleration vendors um, who offer me all of these point solutions that don't really talk to each other. And frankly, I thought this was probably the most interesting. It's wasting me and my reps' time. You know, he's saying every quarter that he has these different vendors. They want to do a QBR with him, and he's got to do a renewal every six to 12 months. And um, So I thought that was interesting. But then on the flip side, he actually said, all of these tools have started to actually waste my reps' time rather than bring the promised sales acceleration benefits. So um, we started to talk a little bit about what the market is doing and, and how the mar- market is starting to shape itself. And I think he hit it on the head. These different point solutions that don't talk to each other are starting to create four or five different screens for reps to utilize. And frankly, we're losing the benefit of sales acceleration. So um, what we what we kind of ended on is is this concept here, and I do think the market is moving more in this direction. So um, let me just kind of phrase this quote. So my CRM is no longer a data input device with multiple sales acceleration vendors. It's a sales intelligence and data output resource with one partner. Now, that's certainly an ideal state. As I talk to, to this leader, I don't think we're, we're quite to that place. And I'm, frankly, I don't know if we, we ever will be to a place where it is just one vendor. But I do think we're moving very quickly to an area where the CRM in general should be more of a intelligence and data output resource. And then you've got these different stacks that aren't just one vendor, but they're stacks around these different sales personas. And so, for example, you're seeing here in this graph where it basically breaks down and says, I've got CRM, but then I've got an SDR platform, and I've got this account executive platform. And I'll have a stack, and for that stack, I will be able to go ideally to one, potentially two. I do think it will be at some point probably one vendor where you'll go to that vendor and say, hey, for my sales development team, I need a stack of technology to make them optimized, and they will be able to deliver that. Right now, for sales development, you know, you go look at the market, there's 500 different companies. They offer all these different point solutions. It, it becomes problematic. In the future, that's got to change, and you're seeing that happening as we speak. And so some of the things I like to see uh, around these personas looks a little bit like this, and I just charted this out. This is kind of the world according to Gabe here, but I said, look, in, in the sales world, there are there's not a million personas. Let's just see if we can't roll them up to a handful, and I broke it down as sales development and account executive and client success, sales management, and sales operations. So as we talk about these different stacks, I do believe that companies need to be thinking about which persona are they trying to build a stack around, and then look for these key areas underneath that persona, and then try to find the vendors that can provide the entire platform. Now, let's just look at an example here. Um, we've done some studies of the sales development. Not only does that the first part of the sales process, but most people start with sales development when they think about optimizing their technology stack. And the reason they do that is because that's typically the function that can be a little more automated. It can be a little bit more supported. And technology can play a bigger role in that type of area. So notice how it works itself down. So prioritization is, is kind of the area one. Two is intelligence. Three is communication. Four is motivation. And five is qualification. That works pretty systematically through the process of how do I identify my target accounts and target contacts? How do I get ready and prepared to reach out to them? How do I actually reach out to them? 
How do I get to a, a successful way of motivating myself to do that in a structured manner? And then that qualification is the whole kind of qualify and, and passing it across the fence to the account executive. So it follows the concept of a process, but each of these areas provide different technologies. And I think companies need to be thinking about buying a stack that supplements the whole sales development. We could walk through the same concept with account executives and client success, et cetera. But being able to systematically look at your organization and say, rather than just buying point solutions, how do I get a stack for a persona that meets their goals, not one of their goals, but their five goals, I think you're going to be in a, a lot smarter place. Now, we've found in most of our data that um, companies, again, start typically at that top of the funnel, sales development side of things, and they typically go with communication as a place to start. That, for some reason, is often a bigger need than others. Uh, but again, ideally, you want to get that whole stack together. So as I sum this up here, um, again, I think you want to be thinking about persona-based stacks rather than point solutions, platforms rather than pieces. Um, recommendation here is to start with sales development. Again, that can typically be a little bit more automated. Communication is part of that stack is a great place to start. So um, as I wrap it up here, again, these are the two questions I feel like they're just great places to start, you guys, as you go through and think about buying sales acceleration technology. I'm a big proponent of it, but I want to make sure that you're thinking strategically about it. And I think to do that, you've got to have your sales process in place. You've got to be able to visualize it, talk someone like myself through it, understand the weaknesses and where the technology can fit into that. And then secondly, that concept of platform versus piece. You've got to start thinking more platform. That rolls up into a persona. Think about what a persona needs. Find a platform that can solve those needs. And I think now you're ready to get some sales acceleration technology. So with that, I'll kind of bring it to a close here. Again, um, all things sales acceleration technology, love to dive into that conversation with you. Please join, uh, join me on our, our sales acceleration podcast. Check us out on LinkedIn as well as on Twitter. And hope you have a fantastic day and enjoy these fantastic